Hey everybody. So today uh, I'm going to be introducing kind of an introductory lab. It's kind of a, a quick activity to get you thinking about energy and your cells and how we can see some of the processes we're going to be learning about in this next section of the unit in your daily life. So I'd like you to first consider the question on the, the page here. And if you don't recognize these two athletes, um, on the left there we have Mo Farah, arguably the, well not even arguably, the, the most successful distance track athlete of all time. He's um, runs for Great Britain, he's British. Uh, as well as the, again, really arguably the fastest um, sprinter of all time. Most decorated, has the fastest times in the sprint distance. Um, and my question for you is, who's faster? And if you consider the question for a moment, you'd probably come to the realization that it sort of depends. Depends. Are we talking about uh, running a mile? Or are we talking about running an 800 meter dash? Are we talking about running a 100 meter dash or a 200 meter dash? And so depending on those um, races, one of these people is faster than the other. Um, if you get probably much over about 200 meters, Mo Farah is going to win every time. If any distance under that, uh, Usain Bolt will win. So who's faster? Well, they're both very fast. Why are they differently fast though? Um, part of it's the way that they train. Part of it's the culture that they come from. Um, but part of it has to do with their anatomy, so the makeup of their cells. And we know that their cells are different because humans have primarily two different kinds of muscle fiber cells. We call them generically fast twitch and slow twitch muscle fiber cells, but they process energy differently. And so we're going to do a little lab to investigate those processes. Now, you're going to need to collect some things to make this lab work. You're also going to need to find an assistant. And whether that means you set up sort of a Google Hangout with somebody and the two of you get on together and you help record for each other, or you just find somebody in your house that can do this for you or with you. Uh, the, the assistant is going to need something to write down some information on uh, and a stopwatch to help keep track of time. You need to get a tennis ball or a volleyball or some kind of object that you can hold in your hand or hold between your hands like this that you can squeeze and that will change shape slightly, okay, but not completely collapse. It can't be a solid object. You need to be able to deform it somehow with your hands. So I found this is just a, a dryer ball. Um, that we use and when I squeeze it I can deform it I can't completely crush it um, and it returns to its shape when I'm done and that way I can count how many times I've squeezed it and it gives me some resistance that's all you need okay um, if you're going to use a larger ball if you don't have a tennis ball or something like this um, it can be something that you push put between your hands and then you squeeze but again it's got to give you resistance it needs to deform a little bit and then rebound when you let your hands back out okay um, so it's a little open-ended on that. Uh, if you read the mus background information, um, muscle fatigue occurs after extended or strong muscle contractions. And we're going to be working on sort of extended muscle contractions today. Research shows that short muscle fatigue um, is associated with lack of oxygen and buildup of lactic acid in those muscles. This is the feeling you get when you're sprinting really hard and that pain builds up. Um, there's another kind of fatigue, long-term muscle fatigue, that's related to the rate, um, the rate of a material called glycogen and the reduction of that glycogen in your cells. We'll get into what glycogen is later. Just for now, you should be aware that that's a thing. So muscle fatigue is, is based on your muscle's metabolism, how it uses energy. Some muscles fatigue after short activity. Others, it requires longer. That's that short twitch versus fast twitch muscle fibers. And Usain Bolt has a lot of fast twitch muscle fibers that would fatigue relatively quickly, whereas Mo Farah has a lot of slow twitch muscle fibers. His muscle fibers um, take much longer to fatigue but have less um, high-end power um, and quickness to them. Um, so, And each person has their own unique muscle composition. Um, that determines their ability of, of muscle groups. And different muscle groups have different kinds of composition. So some are designed for faster and 
our activities and some for slower. Um, so here's what you're going to need to do. Um, you're going to need to find an assistant. Um, when it's time to start, you're going to take with one hand. You're going to do this in your left and your right, so you can start on either one. So if you got a little ball, um, let's start with your left. If you're doing a large ball between your hands, um, what I'd like you to do is to try to um, do it between your hands like this, and then repeat the same process between your knees, so squeezing with your outer thighs. Um, the and then you'll adjust that accordingly. But um, I, this is a, originally set up to be done left-handed, right-handed. So you're going to take, and when they say begin, you're going to hit the stop, the start, and you're going to squeeze as fast as you can, counting the number of times that you squeeze it for 30 seconds. And when the timer hits 30 seconds, your assistant will write down how many times you squeeze the ball. So you got to keep count. Now, you don't stop. Okay, immediately you can pause for a moment to say the number and then restart your counting. So the, the, the next uh, 30 seconds you start again at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and go and so on. And, but no breaks and you got to do this six times. You're going to get really tired by the end. If you don't get really tired, you're either not squeezing as fast as you could or you didn't choose a ball that gives you enough resistance. Um, you're going to record the data for your right hand and your left hand after six trials. Okay. Um, well, seven total. Um, and then you're going to graph it and you're going to graph each hand separately. And when you graph it, make sure that you give the appropriately labeled axes and include reasonable scaling as well as a good legend so I can tell the difference between the left and the right, or if you're doing it up here between the hands and your knee and your legs, uh, or between your arms and your legs. Um, and then there's some reflection questions to think about. Okay, so do this. There's going to be one of my daily lectures. We'll kind of look at this data. So make sure you get this completed by the due date and um, hopefully we can connect your own muscle fatigue to um, energy and living things. All right. Thanks, guys.